One week ago today, the widest tornado on record pulverized a large area just west of Oklahoma City. Good afternoon, I'm David Scott. The path of destruction two and a half miles wide. That is double the size of the tornado that destroyed nearby Moore in May. Last Friday's storm killed at least 20 people. Several of those died in their cars as they tried to flee the storm. One of the injured drivers returned home to Austin today. Austin Anderson was driving the Weather Channel Storm Chaser SUV when the tornado lifted his truck and tossed it 200 yards. Our Aaron Cargill was the first to speak with Austin and his wife as they stepped off the plane. No need to ask how he's feeling, just read his face. The fact Austin Anderson can even do this. He certainly had guardian angels with him. It's a miracle that he's alive. Saturday morning, the photojournalist got the green light to leave an Oklahoma City hospital. CareFlight donated the plane. The Weather Channel paid for the fuel, so this tornado survivor could avoid a six-hour car ride or commercial flight back home. I feel much more comfortable now uh, sitting here <laughs> Now that I'm on the ground in Austin, and if I could, I'd get down and kiss the ground, but I, <laughs> it would too hurt too much. Under the body brace is a cracked sternum and a dozen broken ribs and vertebrae. Doctor's orders, lay down and let the bones heal. I can't lift anything heavier than 10 pounds for the next three months. Hard for a guy who carries a camera for a living. This is going to be the biggest frustration. His wife, Kim, watching it all unfold on live TV. She was Austin's first call after he and his crew crawled out of this mangled SUV. Adrenaline still pumping, no signs of pain. I said, you have to go to the hospital. You may have internal damage or punctured lung. So I'm so glad they did because it's a miracle he didn't paralyze himself walking around the field trying to pick up equipment. Austin says the Weather Channel always aims to be at least a mile away from a twister in the safe zone, but no one could predict the unexpected turn this one took. When it comes to the brewing debate over the role of storm chasers, there's no surprise which side Austin is on. Without somebody on the ground close by, a spotter saying, hey, yes, there is a tornado forming, it adds to the early warning system and therefore saves lives. But Austin says hurricanes are his real passion, and this closest call with death only makes him hungrier to get back to work by September. Maybe. We've got some months to talk about that before he's out of the brace, so we'll, we'll get to that later. Aaron Cargill, KXAN News. And, of course, Austin anticipating some rehab after all those bones heal. Wish him well. To put the storm in perspective, go on to KXAN.com's weather blog to see this map showing the El Reno tornado's path if it were to have hit Austin. As you can see, the path as it's at its widest stretch goes from the UT campus nearly to Old Torf Street in South Austin. Now, going in depth, improved understanding of these tornadoes is giving folks more time to take cover. In the 1980s, the average warning time for a tornado was four minutes after a twister touched down. Today, the average is 13 minutes before. But some experts worry that a longer warning time may spur people to take the foolish risk of trying to outrun the storms. That can be deadly.